Good afternoon. Welcome everybody that is joining us today. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Beth Graybaugh. I am with Veterans in Agriculture. Uh, today's program is made possible uh, through the North Central Extension Risk Education Grant and USDA. If you have a question, you can put it in the chat or we can open the, it up at the end of the presentation and Craig will also take questions during the program. So today we have Craig Downs. He's the president and senior loan administrator for the Iowa Foundation for Microenterprise and Community Vitality. So he's going to share with us today the programs that his organization has as it relates to <clears throat> a small businesses. So welcome, Craig. Thank you, Beth. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to talk about uh, Iowa Microloan, uh, one of my favorite topics to uh, cover. I've got a short slide deck that I would run through and kind of discuss a little more about us, what we do, how we do it, those kind of things. Um, any questions that anyone may have, feel free to jump in at any time or chat box. If I miss the chat box, uh, Megan or Beth, jump on me and, and get me back on track. So, uh, but I think, yeah, we can start real quick and we'll go to the uh, first uh, slide change. We do small business loans, micro loans. Uh, we're an SBA intermediary, which basically means we borrow money from the SBA, turn around and lend it to our loan clients. They pay us, we have to repay SBA. Just a little definition about micro enterprise uh, that we live with in our program. Uh, we're talking about five or fewer full-time employees at loan closing. Uh, this is about 90% of all businesses in the U.S., um, so it's a vast majority of all businesses are that small, but it's, uh, it's kind of the old 80-20 rule that 90% only contributes about 20% of GNP. So uh, it, it, it makes quite a difference. A lot of people still, um, 25, over 25 million U.S. businesses at last count, 20% of the workforce, and uh, all, just over half are home-based. And, and what we do are very small. We realize that. They average uh, about one and a half employees at closing. Um, many home-based, uh, some are part-time, some are full-time, uh, all those kind of things. So let's uh, jump to the next slide. As it relates to Iowa, those, those numbers mirror the national averages basically, but there's still almost 250,000 of these micro-businesses in Iowa, uh, nearly 90% as it is in the U.S., but over eight, well over 80%. And 66 or two-thirds of all new jobs are created by these small businesses. Now, that trend may be uh, changing a little bit with pandemic-related employment and those kind of things, but that's this. these are pre-pandemic uh, numbers for whatever that's uh, worth. Um, we're, we're looking how our importance, I think, has reigned uh, uh, supreme in the last few years because of uh, the fallout, uh, the housing global credit crisis. Our last one would have been in 2008. Uh, which is when we started. We became a legal entity in 2008, started lending money in 2009, and uh, <clears throat> coming through the uh, credit crunch at that point in time, there was a call for, uh, for banks for more equity, uh, trying to uh, not leverage as much, those kind of things, but that's that put a lot of uh, people looking for uh, a credit elsewhere. Uh, we're not, uh, we don't compete with banks for deals. We do people that cannot get traditional credit for all kinds of reasons. They could be credit related. It could be experience related. It might be capital related. All of those kind of things come into it. So we look at very similar information as a traditional lender would, but we tend to look at it just a little differently. Uh, next slide, please. We, we originally started uh, to address gaps that were identified in a survey that was done across the state of Iowa in 2006. Um, the, uh, the gaps at that point started showing up at about $250,000. There was a noted lack of business credit and it became quite acute at about 50,000 and under, which is what uh, brought us to the SBA microloan program because their, their limits in the program are 50,000 on the top side. So that, that fit well. Uh, we also found in that survey that entrepreneurs were most times lacking for other areas of assistance, whereas be 
uh, small business development center, local score chapters, any economic development group, women's business center, veterans and agriculture, and the list goes on and on and on. But there was not a good source to try to find connections to some of those uh, areas of help. That's one of the things that we try to do for clients is make connections. If we can't provide the technical assistance ourselves, we go to great lengths to find that for them. If um, they can do it no other way, we do have a $250 annual grant to our clients that can buy technical assistance if we need to. Sometimes that may be as uh, simple as uh, uh, helping buy QuickBooks, for instance, so they have a good financial reporting system. Sometimes it may be attending a, uh, oh, a trade show or training or any of those types of things as well. Uh, on to the next slide, please. Ivan Micron itself is a 501c3 nonprofit. It's a, it's a private independent nonprofit uh, ran by a board of up to 22 volunteers. We are a statewide micro lender in Iowa, the only one that does exist. We're the only, uh, actually, we're the only SBA micro lender in Iowa uh, as such. There was another program up around Sioux City that covers six counties, and they still continue to do micro lending, but they're not an SBA uh, uh, intermediary any longer. Um, so we took that regional program, those six counties expanded it statewide with the help of that group. And uh, their, their uh, people are still great support and help to our program. But we do operate uh, anywhere in the state of Iowa. We have currently closed loans in 34 of 99 counties across the state, and we continue to actively serve uh, all borders. It's, uh, it gets a little more interesting as we get on the borders of Iowa. Um, our businesses must be in the state of Iowa, but as we get to the edges of the state, we find sometimes the owners may not live in Iowa, but that's okay. As long as the business is in Iowa, we can still do the, do the deal. Next slide, please. We break our program down into two uh, separate components. Basically, we're, uh, yes, we're a lending group. We provide loan capital, but many times we uh, tend to lean very, very heavily on technical assistance to our clients, uh, majoritively provided to our loan clients after loan closing. We believe that is a very, very strong component of our program and any program. As a uh, career uh, lender banker prior to doing this, uh, these are things that the, in the banking business, I never had time to spend in doing a lot of these things, but we meet with our clients at least quarterly. Um, with pandemic, we use a lot of uh, uh, phone, Zoom, uh, emails, all those kind of things versus uh, on uh, in-person in visits, but we will be reinstating those uh, later this year, I believe. Uh, but we do spend a lot of time talking about technical assistance. So we tend to say we have a technical assistance program with a loan component. Uh, it's not necessarily driven by loan capital, all that's key, but not necessarily driven by all that. So we do provide both. Uh, our loans, uh, again, can be... Uh, startup or expansion. So we're, uh, I often say our statistics are uh, remarkable in the fact that they're very unremarkable. We're about 50-50 split between startup and existing businesses. We're about 50-50 split between rural and urban. We're about 50-50 split between male and female with the edge going to the female clients. We're up right now about 55% female. And we're uh, low income, we're just over 50% low to moderate income based on HUD standards. Uh, we're not a targeted program whatsoever, uh, wide open. Those, those are just how we have uh, uh, kind of uh, done since uh, 2009. Next slide, please. Basics of what we do, we provide loans of five to $50,000 of size, talking about the loan side, not the TA side. But five to fifty thousand, that's uh, capped by the SBA program itself. Our current and each loan pool that we borrow from an SBA has a little different interest rate. But currently, our loan rates are eight point one two five or eight and an eighth uh, APR. We can amortize our loans over a period not to exceed six years. As an aside to this, uh, your note rate is going to be eight point one two five. But for the current year of twenty twenty two. 
we do have a grant in place that buys that rate down to 3.00. Uh, that remains to be seen if it will be extended for another year or not, but that's the one thing I can guarantee you the rate for 2022 will not exceed 3.00. We also have a co-financing option, which means we can do the same 50,000, but we can participate that in a loan of 150,000 with a local lender, be it a bank, credit union, uh, lending institution, whatever. So that is an option. We, uh, we don't do that a lot, but that is an option to help be part of a little larger deal. And in our program, which uh, is a direct SBA program, uh, we can, which is a little unusual, but we can refinance credit card debt if it has been used for the business purposes. And we can also subordinate our collateral position, particularly in a co-financing deal. We have to work with lenders and, and everybody typically takes their own position on collateral and we go from there. Next slide. Our uh, requirements for eligibility are pretty straightforward and simple. Um, uh, we say legal Iowa resident, understanding we get to the edge of the state as we talked about earlier, that's, I guess, a little, uh, a little uh, harder to define, but certainly the business must be in the state of Iowa. Uh, 18 years of age or older, um, again, the business located in Iowa, five full-time employees max, uh, credit denial letter required from a lender. Again, we're, we're not, out there competing with bank deals. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to serve those people, those entrepreneurs anywhere in the state of Iowa that cannot access traditional credit for whatever reason. Again, um, that credit denial letter can be in the form of a, actually a letter or it can be other correspondence and information indicating you cannot get credit as you wish in a local institution. Uh, there's really only two things that we uh, cannot use money for. Uh, and that's the purchase of any real estate. We can use it to build out on leasehold improvements. And we also cannot do a short-term line of credit. Everything that we do must be turned out, again, over that period not to exceed six years. We can basically do any legal purpose uh, in the program. Um, we, uh, there, there are different constraints. Uh, it's hard to cover them all in, in uh, now, but it's... Um, any legal purpose is eligible for the program. Um, the only issues that we tend to get into that are gray areas would be uh, adult entertainment, uh, those kind of things, gambling, uh, some of those areas. We deal with those one-on-one -on -one as they may come up. Next slide, please. As far as what we do as far as coaching or technical assistance firm or program, uh, as we talked earlier, but we meet with our clients, uh, obviously at closing, close the loan documents, all those kind of things. We set up a technical assistance plan at that point that we will review with them uh, quarterly as we meet and talk about the business. We want to sit down and talk with our clients to see how they're doing as per their business plan. Are they doing what they intended? Uh, are they not? Is there a reason why? Should they be? All those kind of things. But we just kind of help to coach and walk through uh, life with them as their business evolves, either opens or evolves as an existing business and uh, help, help them track. Our technical assistance plan, which uh, we revisit annually uh, with the client to make changes to, if at least annually, I should say. And uh, this just is a document that helps guide us towards maybe some of their needs are identified. Maybe they have, um, again, could be financial reporting. It might be they're exploring how their business structure uh, is best going to suit their needs going forward. Uh, insurance, marketing, all those kind of things that we try to uh, help with. And if we can't provide the uh, information in that TA plan that they need, we tend to find that for them. Uh, and again, we have that $250 a year grant to buy technical assistance, if that's the uh, only way that we can find a solution. Next slide. Uh, just a quick recap. Uh, to date, we have uh, done well over 200 loans uh, to those businesses uh, that cannot get conventional credit. Uh, we have disbursed just over five, well, a little over $5 million totally today. Again, some of the stats, uh, I earlier said 50-50, but you can see we're pretty close. Uh, as far as stats between startups and existing. Um, 
Right now, we're seeing a trend towards startups. There are conventional lenders that are starting to pull their horns in about doing less and less startups. And so we're seeing more interest, I think, from clients from that way. Um, I forgot to update my county total, but we're 34 counties so far. Um, again, there's a split metro, rural, male, female, uh, those kind of things. So that's that's kind of uh, just for averages sake. We're not a targeted program, but those are kind of how our stats are stacking up. Uh, next slide. Like I said, we average about a job and a half roughly at uh, closing. So well over 250 jobs have been created and are saved in our program to date with our approved loan clients. Um, we're just under 12% uh, minority represented in our loan approvals. Uh, you can see it our 4% are with people with disabilities and 57% are the medium income, uh, low to medium income based on HUD standards. Um, we, don't, we don't target any particular uh, uh, part of those uh, stats, but, but people seem to be interested in uh, what we're looking at. We did not intend to be majoritively uh, low to medium income in our program, but that's kind of the way it's worked out, which is fine. But it's interesting to see that evolve. That, that typically, over the last uh, seven or eight years, has actually been growing. It started off a little less, and now it's been growing. So, uh, Next slide. And last slide. Uh, this is uh, just my contact information. Um, I'm, I'm officed in uh, Boone, Iowa. Uh, you've got phone number, email, all those kind of things, our website. I am more than happy to answer questions anytime, uh, be it regarding an application, just information. I had three or four phone calls yesterday, just general information, uh, trying to help people identify what maybe it is they're looking for and, and what direction they might, uh, might go. But our whole philosophy and goal is to foster entrepreneurship anywhere in the state of Iowa. We have uh, uh, done many, many different kinds of deals. We have done uh, bed and breakfast, some food service, uh, small, maybe we've done three food, three, yeah, three food trucks um, uh, in more metro type areas, uh, or at least travel to metro areas. We have done small manufacturing in two different machine shops, metal fabrication shops. We have done one bus company, a tour bus company. Um, trying to think our big, our, our only several spas and, uh, and gyms. We're not uh, real big on franchise type businesses. Uh, we see many times the franchise costs exceed what it looks like they're getting in value. So you have to be careful about that. Our one concentration in industry would be hair salons. Uh, we have done 15, 16 different uh, loans to hair salons at this point. Uh, it's just amazing how well those work. They're, they're, some are, are in urban communities, but many are in rural communities. Uh, people are very loyal to the hair salons and it's just been a great, great uh, arrangement for us. Um, we have recently, uh, our last loan we did was actually to uh, two, young, uh, two young gentlemen, they're, uh, they're uh, 20 and under, and doing uh, flat uh, concrete uh, work. Uh, and then we just closed that about 60 days, yeah, about 30 days ago, and uh, they're off and running and construction season is keeping them busy. We have recently done a uh, over-the-road truck driver uh, with his own uh, semi-purchase, um, and that's going quite well. So we, we've done lots of different things, software companies, uh, uh, about anything you can imagine from soup to nuts. So we're, we're wide open as far as what we, uh, what we can do, what we encourage to do. Um, we're always looking for clients. We want to do more deals. We would like to continue to serve uh, the state of Iowa with our program. Um, that in a nutshell is really what I've got to offer today. If there are any thoughts or questions of things that we have not covered, I'm glad to answer those currently. Well, thank you, Craig, um, for the great information. So I have some questions, uh, but I have one comment. Uh, first, I learned, and you know, while we're speaking to veterans today, I learned that through the or the Veterans Business Outreach Center gave an interesting statistic the other day, and perhaps you heard this, said that veterans 
Americans own 9.1% of the small businesses in the U.S. And they, that is an astounding number given that between 1% and 2% of the U.S. population are veterans. So I thought that was a great statistic to show the entrepreneurship that is in the veteran population. So. Yeah, absolutely. I've not heard that. But that's yeah. uh, that's that's a resounding number. That's quite a multiplier from one yeah. or two percent up to nine plus. Absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly right. OK, so some of the questions uh, is now I, some people are aware that USDA has some uh, rule that through their rule development agency that they have um, some types of business loans, but theirs can, they sometimes determine eligibility based on size of the city or town. Does, does your organization have any restrictions on town size for loan approval or eligibility? Right. Good question. Uh, I know USDA does uh, based on size community. We have absolutely no restrictions. Um, we have a concentration of clients in the Des Moines Polk County area, and that's population driven. Uh, again, but we're half and half between urban areas, and those would be areas of 50,000 or more and rural areas. So that, that doesn't make any difference to us. Okay, great. Okay, so the next question is, you were talking about loans, people not being able to get uh, credit. So is the reluctance on, on traditional lenders, do they consider some of these loans to be higher risk? Are they not an enterprise that they're uh, familiar with? Or I guess how you know, do you always consider them higher risk or are they just the bank is shying away because it's not maybe in their area of expertise? Right. Well, the, the quick answer to that question, Beth, is yes. But the more detailed answer is there, there, all of that comes into play. We uh, Things ebb and flow a little bit with the economy and the amount of risk that local lenders want to take. Um, they may not be familiar with a particular type of business. Um, and sometimes, yeah, sometimes startups uh, scare some people, uh, all those kind of things. Uh, but different businesses carry a lot more risk than others. Anybody's let to money for any period of time is, is, has seen that, and we'll see that again, obviously. But we are targeting those people that banks cannot do. They would, they would like to make that loan to, to Jane Doe. Uh, but they can't quite figure it out. Maybe I can say that as we talked earlier, maybe there's a credit issue and maybe that, and we find out maybe that's due to a marital status change. Maybe that's due to a health event, job change. There's a myriad of things can, that can cause that that aren't reflective of necessarily how they pay the bills. A lot of things go into that. So uh, capital, we look at five to 10% capital from our clients going into the business. A typical lender will probably require more depending on the type of business. Um, experience, maybe if you've, uh, the last 10 years you worked at uh, Brand X and you made widgets and now you want to uh, get into food service business or now you want to do something else but you don't have experience. Some lenders will not uh, be keen on that because you have no experience in that line of business. And so that, that, that could well be an issue. And we've seen that several times. Just because your lifelong dream is to run a restaurant or run food service um, doesn't give you experience in that if you've been working wherever, doing whatever. So um, there's, there's a myriad of things that can, that can come into that and do come into that. But yeah, we try, we try to spend the time to, if we know all of our clients are fragile by nature because if they were not fragile or if they were if they did not have a work or two uh, on their application they would already be funded and be on their merry way so we know there are issues out there and we try to watch those that's one of the reasons that we keep in really close contact with our clients to help understand when a problem occurs what we can do about it how we can approach it those kind of things so that's that's a long answer to a yes question well but i think it's a good 
I think that you gave a lot of different examples about why a bank may not that that loan for them is right on the fringe of they want to approve it, but they just can't quite get there where your organization is maybe providing that little bit of extra support or maybe a little bit lower interest rate that makes that loan attractive for your organization and you are able to provide them maybe a little bit more structure able to Right. And that's, that's the whole goal of a, of a micro program is to, to fund those deals that would not get funded ordinarily. We know there's more risk. Um, nationwide uh, micro lending uh, rates average about 15%. We're just over half of that roughly. And uh, for the current year, of course, probably a bit less than that, but that's indicative of the amount of risk that's carried. Okay. The next question that we have is, uh, you talked about technical assistance that you provide. So what happens if I don't have a loan through you, but I recognize that I need technical assistance? Uh, what can I do? Yeah, and that, another good question. That depends on really the nature of the uh, technical assistance or the TA that you're looking for. Uh, uh, we do spend quite a bit of time with clients helping to get applications ready to uh, come in and go to loan committee and those kind of things. We also use our various and sundry partners that I talked about earlier in slide presentation to refer to uh, clients to them to maybe they need more uh, polish on their business plan. Maybe they need help with projections. Maybe they need more hands on. Um, the, the, the veterans in agriculture, uh, the SBDCs, the scores, those type of people that are there to help them, we try to help make that connection. So I know I said the last question was our the last one, but we have another. So uh, kind of segues into the previous question, uh, you know, wanting technical assistance you know, I know you talked about that your organization does refinancing of loans. How does that process work? Is that a, does, can I say I have a loan through a traditional bank and I realize I'm kind of, you know, needing to do something different. Do I approach you about uh, refinancing or is it a bank referral or how does that process work? Sure, we, we have uh, had clients and lenders both approach us. Uh, typically, um, if it's a refinance from a bank or a traditional lender of some kind, it's because the AMORT is not lining up with the cash flow and they need a longer AMORT than the uh, traditional lender maybe is willing to provide. Uh, a lot of times it's existing credit card debt. People are, bless their hearts, but entrepreneurs are very optimistic people. It's always going to get better. And oftentimes they'll run up some credit card debt uh, before they realize they need some additional um, uh, term debt. So sometimes we're refinancing credit cards and putting in a term payout to help uh, match the cash flow uh, to the loan payments and those kind of things. So we do see it both ways. Um, yeah, and, and again, the, the banks, yeah, we have a few that have come from the bank because they just, they've got a, three-year AMORT and they need a five-year AMORT uh, to make cash flow work. So those, those are all our options. All right, well, very good. I don't think that we have any other questions. Um, Megan, did you, do you see any others? I don't. Um, and with that, is there any other comments that you would like to make, Craig, or something that you didn't uh, cover that you would like to? Oh, I, I never cover it all, it seems like. But I, I would just like to invite any and, and all, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, uh, go to our website. Uh, call me. Go give me, drop me an email if you have questions related to a loan or related to whatever else. And uh I'll do my best to answer them and help point you in the right direction and be of assistance one way or another. So we're, we're I say, we're always looking for deals. We wanna help push and serve entrepreneurs anywhere in the state of Iowa. 
All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and for providing us all this great information today. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. All right. Thank you.